All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I am not in my kitchen right now. You guys will all recognize. Wait a second. Must be the beginning of the month because Heather is back with a guest. And I am super delighted to introduce you all to Rachel Varga. Rachel, oh, you look so beautiful and lovely. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for having me, Heather. It's a pleasure to be able to share a little love and light with your community all over the world. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have to just say right now, your hair, it's so beautiful. <laughs> what did you do today? Well, I'll tell you a little bit of a funny history about my hair. Uh, it was kind of my vice growing up. It was my pretty well number one beauty hiccup or dilemma because it's really thick curly coarse hair i mean i can do the blowout get the volume but when you're young it's really difficult to know what to do with it and so so typically i do to in order to get the look of like the elsa braid kids will come up to me like elsa, elsa. and then i know a frozen movie is coming out right it's pretty funny yes. uh but but i do wear some extensions for a little bit of extra length probably but my i think my natural hair comes to about about here Okay. So just to get a like lower fullness, just yeah. so you know, it's not all mine. So don't beat yourself up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Because it's gorgeous and you, you like, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. So it's, it's fun to put yourself together, isn't it? Yeah. I, I really take a lot of time in my self-care routine. Just, I have this really cool podcast actually uh, with Amanda Tess on the Rachel Varga podcast. And she talks about just taking the time when you're putting your beauty products on, just appreciate the beauty of your cheeks and your eyes and your jawline and your neck, taking that time, taking pride in being a woman and like, Hey, yeah, we can, we can look awesome. Right. And, but I mean, sometimes we just want to be at home with don't bother doing your hair and makeup. Trust me. I had two days of that this weekend and it was Awesome. I loved it. <laughs> I do. I do too. It's, it can be, you can be in your yoga pants and, and just run a brush of your hair and wash your face and feel great. Or you can doll up and get the makeup on and feel really good that way too. And I have to say, Amanda Testa lives really close to me. She's in Colorado. Oh, you know also. Her fabulous. Yes. Yes. And I heard that podcast. So let's, let's take a step back and let's just really do a formal introduction right now. So everybody in the group, they got to see your bio. And so they know that you are a nurse. Give me the, the total title because it's a big one and I liked it. So, so I'm a registered nurse. And so I have my bachelor's of science in nursing and I underwent additional training. I used to be a pediatric ICU nurse. I did that for two years. And then I wanted to maybe look at applying to medical school. So I did my medical three racks, fell into aesthetic nursing after having a treatment or two myself. And then I went on and received my board certification. So I'm a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. Oh my gosh. How fun, right? Sounds like you're doing like, it's like all of these things are your passions and your interests. And you really carved out a really unique space. It's a lot of fun just, oh, I just got little little shivers, but just really helping women look and feel their best. Because a lot of times people will come and see me when they've gone through a bit of a transition in their life, whether their their kids have, have moved on or they've lost a partner or just some other life event has happened and they're like, hey, I'm going to do me. It's about time. And then I sort of guide them through the process of just kind of basic self-care practices and then rejuvenation options. So it's truly a privilege to work with women in this capacity. And it's just kind of, it's a little bit bigger than I am because the topic of radiance really does come from within. And yes. there's some really cool things to share about that. That doesn't cost anything. Yes. Well, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And so you just talked about this inner radiance. And so our theme for this month in Simply Full is renewal. And we've been sharing ideas. What are things that really make us feel just like full and happy and renewed? And the other day I was walking back from the library and I got, I, all of a sudden I was just, I heard all these birds chirping mm -hmm. and the air was full of this like chirp, 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 chirp. And I took a video because I couldn't see the birds at first. It was a gray cloudy day, which is unusual for here in Colorado, but I found them and I got a video of it and it just like, just listening to that like filled my heart with joy and felt renewing. And so we're all sharing different types of, 
uh, experiences that we're having to feel that inner renewal. Uh, and I would love to hear what do what do you do, Rachel, for that that inner renewal? What are, what are some oh, of your tips? Yeah, I love this question. I live on Vancouver Island, which mm -hmm. is in a very beautiful pocket on the most western southern part of Canada. So what I like to do on the weekends is take my Jeep. It's a four by Jeep. I go either three hours up island or, you know, 40 minutes in another direction. And I just like to actually go where no one is, where I don't hear any traffic noise. I don't hear any airplanes. I don't hear any people. I'm not like around any other people. Sometimes I'll go with like my husband or, or best friend just for safety and things like that, because there are wildlife. I have seen <laughs> cougars and bears on my, um, weekend renewal excursions. But I have to say, just getting out of the city, um, you know, some people are going to be a little bit more sensitive to sounds, stimulation, 5G. A lot of people are talking about that. I really actually feel that. And I know here that actually rolled out recently. I really feel that. So for March being the month of renewal, I think that's really suiting because January and February for a lot of people was just like this really exciting um, movement slightly anxious feel if, if are you resonating with that totally the go 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 and what i'm trying to do is just slow down and pause yeah. and yeah just allow yeah so appreciating the beauty of nature just being in nature i like to uh, if you go on my instagram feed you'll see me doing like little selfie videos like hey i'm in my spot so you can actually see it and that's where i go to just create i get creative uh, there's studies that actually show that when you get into nature, you are, you get more clarity, you get more uh, inspiration. And so it does actually make you function better, I find, when I just like tune out and take that time, take your journal, pen to paper. But being in the beauty of nature and really appreciating the, the smells, the sounds, the mm. sights, how you feel, the feel of the earth. And just being, I think it's, it's something that's free, but we do need to take time to do that. For sure. You know, sometimes if I can't get out and if I feel like I've got too much on my schedule, I'll make sure to put pine essential oil in my diffuser that's so great. that it feels grounding to me. And I, so it's, it's one of those, like, it's the next best alternative. Of course, getting outside is the best. I, <laughs> I love have the little sprigs of pine right here. Do you right there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. So nature is one thing that you do to renew yourself. What is something that you do in your daily routine or your daily schedule, something that you do to, to make yourself feel renewed, to make yourself feel loved? Oh, this morning, actually, while I was getting ready, I just moved over this weekend. So talk about the change with like February to March, right? It's full force hit me, right? So here I am in, in this, uh, my new bathroom. I mean, it's not new. It's, it's, it's an old home. It's ready for some updates. But the window and the sunshine was just coming in. And I just let that sun hit my skin. And any naturopath, functional medicine provider is going to say 15 minutes in the morning, let the sun hit your eyes. Let the sun hit your skin for 15 minutes before the UVA, UVB rays get high is a great way to get in your vitamin D. So uh, that's a part of my new routine. I just kind of stumbled. I stumbled onto it, which is really nice. But taking then taking the time to cleanse the skin morning and night, moisturize morning and night, wear mineral-based sunscreen every single day, exfoliate a couple of times a week. Those are like the four key basics that I always do in my morning routine. Yeah. So it's, it's simple. Like it doesn't have to be complicated, right? That's right. Yeah. But it's just using the right products. So mm -hmm. what I, you asked me what I do and I actually only use medical grade products. So these are products that have been formulated by a company. They hire this awesome chemist. They seek out active ingredients like vitamin C, E, hyaluronic acid, vitamin A, glycolic acid, salicylic acid, lactic acid, the list goes on, peptides, right? And then this, this uh, chemist basically puts it all in a formulation, makes sure that everything's stable. So for example, if you're using a vitamin C, if it's not stabilized, it's gonna oxidize on you and actually cause damage to the skin or hyaluronic acid, if it's not the right molecular size, it can't even get into the skin cell. So there's a lot of science that goes into good formulation, making sure everything's stable. And then the companies I work with actually do research on the final formula, not just making claims on the back of the bottle. That's really important. So you, I really like to recommend using that awesome, locally made, uh, small batch, 
really simple body products. Like use that for your body, like in the shower, your wash and your creams and oils and things like that. But when it comes to the face, neck, chest, I do recommend kind of kicking it up a notch and switching to medical grade for results. Yes, because I mean, I will tell you for years and years and years, I never thought about, I thought, okay, what's well, important what I eat, but what you're putting on your skin, you're nourishing yourself as well. And it's, yes. it, it's like, you want to be able to eat kind of what you're putting on your skin. And forever, you guys, I used oil of Olay and thought it was quality because I liked the branding. I liked the marketing. I liked the simple white bottle. And I didn't look at the back of it and realize that there were a lot of toxic ingredients. And so definitely like everything that you're saying, Rachel, I'm so, it's just resonating with me because what we put on our bodies, it's, it's not just to feel good in the moment, but it's for long-term health. And I think that's so important for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And with you and I, we are of a Fitzpatrick skin type too. So we don't have a ton of melanin in our skin as opposed to someone who say of that, you know, gorgeous Mediterranean <laughs> descent and they have that beautiful olive golden skin. We yeah. actually need to work a little harder to put antioxidants on our skin and feed it and uh, protect it so that we don't develop precancerous skin lesions and also potentially skin cancers in the future too and also accelerated aging. So there's a big health component towards looking after your skin. We got you know UVA, UVB, and blue light um, uh, rays that are actually impacting your skin. So as soon as your fit, your feet hit the floor, you got to look after your skin. Oh my gosh. Talk a little bit more about the blue lights because that might be new information for some of mine. Yeah. I wish I had a study to reference, but I feel like you could just easily find this online. Okay. So uh, a few of the graphics that I've seen, the UVA and UVB rays, the UVA are the aging rays. They're, they're the rays that are present on those cloudy rainy days. UVB rays are the ones that are present on the sunny days, so like the burning rays. UVA reaches deeper than, or sorry, yeah, UVA reaches deeper than UVB, but the blue light reaches deeper than all of them. And this blue light is coming from? Our devices. Our devices, you guys, our phones, our computers, and if you're sitting in front of your a screen all day long, that has a serious health impact. Impact. So not only is it stopping the production of melatonin, so you can't sleep at night, but it's impacting your skin as well. I had no idea. Yeah, this is pretty recent stuff yeah. uh, that I've been hearing, going to different conferences and whatnot. So I think it's worthwhile sharing that little tidbit. Oh my gosh, for sure, for sure. So I want to say something. You uh, talked about our skin, our skin tone, and so forth. You'll laugh, but when I was in high school and college, I was a lifeguard at an outdoor pool, and I would be in competitions with all of the people of Italian descendants, like who can get the tan the tannest. Right. Here I am, Irish, <laughs> and I'm trying to win this competition about getting tan. And so now, at the age of 45, I'm starting like all of the the brown spots are showing up on my face, and I'm thinking, oh, why did I do that? If I could go back in time. But, uh, but yeah, like it's, it's, you know, walking outside on a cloudy day, you're right. We should still have some kind of protection on. Yeah. Runners actually, they age very quickly. Of course they are fit and have a low BMI, but when they're running without having anything on their skin, it's, it significantly impacts aging. That was me. I, I was a runner for a long time. I don't do that anymore because, uh, just it, it it fed me and it made me really happy for a certain period in my life. But now I'm finding other things that um, don't raise the cortisol as much that mm. that enable me to still stay in shape and feel good. But yeah, I spent lots of hours outside running. So that's uh, good to know. Well, we have a, we have a number of questions from the group. Um, and so why don't we get to those questions and then we'll get into um into other areas as well. There's just so much I want to ask you and clearly so does everybody else. So <laughs> does that I work for you? Yeah, I look forward to this. Okay, super. And thank you guys, everybody. You guys had so many good questions and um, we'll go ahead and dive into these. Okay, so Rachel, question number one is from somebody named Holly. And Holly would like to know, she would love to know any natural remedies for bags under the eyes Sleep and healthy eating doesn't seem to be enough. 
Mm, this is a really great question. And actually my area of specialty for nearly the last 10 years has actually been in an oculoplastic surgery office. So the eyes are my specialty. This is the area of the face that actually ages first. And I actually wrote an academic article on the topic of rejuvenating the eye area. You can actually just search my name, Rachel Varga on PubMed or any other academic article website, and you can read it. It might be a little kind of medical jargony, but uh, I'll refer to some things that I talk about. So the, a the, the area of the eyes ages first in respect to the rest of the face. The skin around the eyes is really thin. Actually, just two weekends ago, I was in Toronto and did a live cadaver uh, module with uh, Dr. Kodafana from Mayo Clinic. So we took apart the layers of, of the face, obviously on someone who was, who was deceased, and the skin around the eyes is super duper thin. So the reason why you see darkness here, right, like uh, 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 dark under eye circles, is because the skin is literally paper thin. So by protecting the skin with good skincare, there are some treatments that you can have done as well. That's really key. Um, a word of warning here, there's a ton of gimmicks out there and beauty products that say, oh, we'll fix dark circles and under eye bags. I just see so many people wasting time and money on this. So depending on what type of bags are present and fullness, it could be from a number of different things. Skin laxity, uh, some edema around the eyes, fat, bone loss to the cheeks. So to really find out what's right for you, Holly, I do actually recommend uh, either booking a personal consultation with me online or seeking the assistance of an oculoplastic surgeon in your area. Okay, that's great. You know, I heard um, you talk about there's lots of like information out there and funny yep. information out there. One of the things that I heard uh, for bags under the eyes, I feel like, gosh, did I read this like in a book or I don't know what, it's like tea bags. And then it's, or maybe some sitcom made fun of that. And so somebody had tea bags on their, under their eyes or cucumbers and I don't know, it just, but, but there, yeah, we all want it. Right. But it's, it can, yeah. It's not about the quick fix as I talk about in my paper. It's a multifaceted approach to rejuvenating the eye area. So I can get into more detail um, during our consult. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the first things that people usually seek my help for. But just, just really avoid the gimmicks, uh, the beauty products, like under eye pads, things like that. But some things that you can do, avoid MSG. Obviously, MSG is terrible for us anyways. Sleep on your back slightly propped up. Um, if you're prone to allergies, say in the fall with mold from the leaves, or now it's you know almost springtime here and the cherry blossoms are coming out. So that can sometimes precipitate things a little bit. So just kind of know your triggers and just be aware of that. But it could be an anatomical thing as well that you know just a basic like skincare product isn't going to take care of. That's fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So she also would like some recommendation on minimalist natural makeup. What is the least makeup needed to still look professional? There we go. Yeah. So the least amount of makeup still needed to look professional. Yeah. I'll share with you guys what I do. I love using Glow Skin Beauty. Um, you can just hit up their website. I'm not paid to share this, uh, but it's a it's a mineral-based makeup line. It's talc-free, paraben-free, coal tar dye-free. It's awesome, but it also performs really well. So I just use their concealer, uh, their contour kit, mascara, glosses, things like that. So I personally actually don't even like to recommend full foundation for people because then you're just seeing the foundation. Get the skin to a good place, and then you can get away with a little bit of concealer, a little bit of powder, do your contour, or your blush. Because I have to say, if you just do concealer and powder, you're going to look like a ghost. You got to get that contour and blush in there and, uh, you know, brighten the eyes a little bit, especially if you're doing like video or photos and things like that. It's a really um, high performing line. I love it. Okay. And what was that name one more time? Glow Skin Beauty. Anybody can access it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Michelle has an eye question as well. She has puffy hooded lids every morning. Michelle, I have those too. And for, for me, I don't know, it might be genetic, but I'm, I don't know. Anyway, I understand your pain, girl. So she has puffy hooded lids every morning. It's getting worse as she gets older. What can she do to reduce 
and what color of lid shadow would conceal or enhance? Sure. So if someone has puffy lower eye bags, again, it's a good idea to either you could book a consult with myself and I can go into more detail or with an oculoplastic surgeon uh, because hooded upper eyelids, I mean, it's kind of par for the course as we age, right? We lose bone in our, so there's a great study on the facial fat pad loss. So we lose fat in our face, we lose bone in our face and the elastin and collagen changes over time. So we get kind of like a descent of everything and a bit of laxity, especially when we hit age 50 to 60. There's another study, uh, I have this little chart on my Instagram at Rachel Varga Official, that women's faces age three times faster than men's from age 50 to 60. So it's not just in your heads. Wow. So from ages 50 to 60, we age, women age three times faster? Yes, the shape of the face changes three times faster. Mm -hmm. And it's because oh of all of those things. It's bone, fat, and soft tissue changes. So again, a simple beauty product or just you know cleaning up your lifestyle isn't going to really adjust those sort of underneath the skin changes. So that's where rejuvenation options can really come in. And so that's really what I share um, more in sort of like a one-on-one -on -one setting. Okay, that totally makes sense. Gosh, that's fascinating. Hmm. Uh, my husband was saying to me the other day, he's like, how do I get so old? So he's one year older than I am. He's, he's 46, I'm 45. And we were just joking. We love our ages, we're embracing our ages. But he was like, what happened? And then he was saying, I think you're aging better than I am. But now I'm like, well, don't worry, you know, because five years I'll catch up with you. <laughs> So what I like to recommend for um, women, men and women, because men want to age well too. Yeah. Seriously, once you ladies start to up your skincare game, your husband's going to start <laughs> dipping in the products too. I know mine does. And uh, whatever you can do sort of like pre-menopause, during menopause, and then post-menopause to really mitigate that change because our estrogen, our hormones, they're all changing and that really can disrupt the elastin and collagen in the skin. That's such a great point. And same with pregnancy. If you can do a little bit of work, you know, preconception so that when you're, you're you know, you're, you're pregnant and then you're breastfeeding afterwards, you've done a little bit of heavy lifting ahead of time. And then there's some great things to do in the meantime to prevent things like um, melasma, pigmentation, keep the skin well hydrated, sun protected, exfoliated, all that stuff. There's lots that we can do at any stage of the game. I even work with people in their 90s. So you're never too young or too old to care for yourself. To care for yourself and to feel good about yourself and to know that you're worth it. I love that you just said that. So Cheryl would like to know the best ways to prevent facial lines and wrinkles. I'm going to diddle that. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the best ways to prevent facial lines and wrinkles, I would say, well, take a look at how you're sleeping. So I want all you guys to take your hand and mi mimic what side of the face you sleep on, okay? So we can all do this together here. So I sleep on my back like a pharaoh as often as I can. So <laughs> what, what side do you sleep on? Well, so when I, so I have two kids. When I was pregnant, I always slept on my left because yeah. it was just easier for indigestion. It was easier. Right. Um, and it felt so much more comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go on my right and it does not feel good at all now. I yeah. try to sleep on my back as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually a little bit elevated too. Okay. Um, yeah. But my head will fall to my left. Okay. So I want you to take your hand and push your skin and notice all of the vertical lines on your face that form. So when we're talking about hooded eyelids and laxity to the eye area, that's what you're doing while you're sleeping is you're actually squishing the the bone wow. and the fat and causing yeah. the soft tissue to actually buckle so those little vertical lines in your lower eyelids those are probably sleep look lines look at that yeah. those, oh my gosh you guys are probably grossed out but no <laughs> look at those sleep lines yes yeah. I have a YouTube video actually talking about this, and so you could check out my YouTube for some info on it. Um, but there are some really cool sleep aids out there that give you really good neck support. These are actually devices that can be used to prevent the compression of the face. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. What, what, do you know what the name of those devices are? Yeah. I really like to work with the Envy pillow. I've had mine. I use mine every night and I've used it for the last almost 10 years. And I had my last one last, like, I don't know, six or seven years. It was still good, but okay. um, actually some of my nursing colleagues, they created this device because they started to notice this, this in, in their patients. And they're like, oh, we got to send you a new one. But it, the other one was still great. So they're made in Canada. They're not made in China. They're not going to off gas. And they're really, they're quite wonderful. It takes a little bit of getting used to, to get used to that, the angle of support. But that's a really great way to prevent fine lines and wrinkles. But of course, what are you applying on your skin every day, right? How are you cleansing it? Are you getting off the dirt oil, debris, pollution, dead skin? You have to cleanse morning and night. I don't know who started telling people, just wash your face with water in the morning. Just wash it once a day. And no, because you know your hair is everywhere. You might be sweating a little bit. You're in your sheets. If you have you know, some fur babies cuddling with you or, or your other partner or whatever, you have to cleanse morning and night with something that's pH balanced for the skin. Feed the skin with a moisturizer. Uh, that's got you know a little bit of a smattering of like vitamin C, E, hyaluronic acid, peptides. Use your mineral-based sunscreen to protect your skin from UVA, UVB, and blue light, and then exfoliate a couple of times a week. It doesn't have to be complicated, but doing that is really key. I think that's so important that you said that because sometimes we feel like, oh, well, I didn't put makeup on today, so I don't need to wash my face. And there are so many toxins, toxin, toxins, and pollutants, and so yeah. forth that are are just we're immersed in. Yes. So it's a great reminder. I feel like with things that we're exposed to now, both um, chemically and environmentally, we have to work a little bit harder with our lifestyle practices to mitigate that in order to, you know, function and be healthy, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so Hillary is saying she um, seconds Michelle's question about eyes and any advice for lines that are forming between the eyebrows? Yeah, so those could sometimes be sleep lines too, right? So if you're to do that compression on your face again, you'll see that these lines get a bit deeper. They also, sleeping can um, also enhance upper lip lines too. It's not very fair that women get upper lip lines and men don't, but it's just part of our anatomy. But this is primarily caused by muscles. So we have our core, a little bit of anatomy lesson here. You could go online and just look at facial muscles, but there's a couple of facial muscles that contribute to lines between the brows. So our corrugator muscle here on either side and our procerus muscle. So when these muscles fire, you get these lines forming in here. So it's kind of a combination of side sleeping and then what your muscles are doing as well. And then to, because I can't make any uh, medica medication or treatment recommendations, I'm Canadian. In America, I, people can be a little bit more forthcoming with the information that they share. Uh, I have to be a little bit more conservative with what I share online, unfortunately. So to learn more about some of those treatment options, I do cover that in a consult. Okay, super. Yeah. yeah but there's tons that we can do. It's like, you know, don't try and do facial yoga to, you know, when people do that, they're actually making a lot of their facial muscles stronger, or there's some at home devices that, you know, claim to get rid of that, or you can even buy this tape on online on Amazon, and it can spread the skin out. One tip for your audience, if you haven't already, check out that uh, Netflix episode called Broken. It oh. talks all about the counterfeit beauty and health industry. And it's actually considered more lucrative now on Amazon and eBay than drug trafficking trade. So do not buy beauty health products on Amazon or eBay. There's just a lot of fake stuff out there. So when you're looking at like skincare products, working with a professional like myself, I work with people all over the world, um, getting the proper guidance, and you don't need to spend a ton of money. So sometimes people think, oh, I got this, this product from the clinic I've been getting such and such done at. And I'm like, oh, but I can find it on Amazon for half the cost. There's no guarantee that that's actually what you're getting. And I remember buying um, a hair product at Shoppers Drug Mart when I was in high school and I bought it from my salon. And then I saw it on the shelf and I opened it. It smelled like hot dogs. It clearly was not the same thing. So this has been going on a long time. Wow. Wow. And you know, it's not just in the 
the beauty care industry, but I like, I know with essential oils that you have to be careful where you buy those as well. And anything you're eating or putting on your body or using in your home, yeah. I don't recommend um, getting those from like unrecognized distributors. Yeah, that's a great point. Okay. You said facial yoga. Yeah. Who don't know what facial yoga is. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I, I think that yoga for the body is must. Absolutely. Yoga, Pilates, my most vibrant patients are, are doing this type of practice all the time. And they look great. Like with what you mentioned with, with running, sometimes that can be really hard on people's joints. So doing some of these other types of activities are awesome. But unfortunately, people Google how to get rid of lines between the brows and jowls, and then they are redirected to a Pinterest facial yoga guideline. And unfortunately, what happens as we age, this is actually going to be the topic of my next uh, academic article I'm writing this year, our jowls, our chin, our nose and our ears get larger as we age. So when we activate these muscles here with constantly talking and chewing and chewing gum, they get big and bulky. So unfortunately, what some people are doing, they're doing yoga. They're like, oh, stretch these muscles. They're making things worse. They're actually causing more bulking of the muscle. And we want to actually uh, relax them. I, I don't know where I heard this, but apparently women in the 19th century aristocratic women were kind of cluing into this and a lot of them switched to soft food so they weren't sort of like chewing as aggressively because they watch this when you're chewing and talking look at yourself in the mirror and see the activation of the muscles oh what a good awareness exercise i yeah. love i'm going to try that i'm going to look at myself in the mirror as i'm eating and talking and see oh my gosh that's great yeah yeah yeah, that's a fan. I'm not a fan of chewing gum anyway. I don't like all of the different things that are in, in exactly. gum. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, huh, that is fascinating. Okay, watch that facial yoga. So you just talked about some of your um, most vibrant patients. What else are they doing? Mm, well, they're getting in nature. They're usually kind of hippies at heart. They have some type of meditation, spiritual practice, whatever that may be. So many of us work with different lineages, and that's totally fine. Just find what lights you up, as what one of my favorite authors, Rebecca Campbell, says. She's from Australia and now in UK. I had the pleasure of meeting her. And oh, she's just such an inspiration. If you're wanting to dive into a great book talking about getting into your feminine energy, that's a sweet resource. But they're typically following a plant based diet. They have a, a meditation spiritual practice, they have some type of physical practice as well. I actually talk a lot about this in my ebook and my masterclass uh, that you can just get access to on my website. And I share what they're doing. So it's like, why wouldn't I want to share what these stunning women who are 60 plus are doing that are outshining my other patients in their 20s? It's like, what's the difference there? What's that like inner what's that inner good stuff? What's that radiance? What is that? So that's actually what I really like to share. And the good news is a lot of that really impactful stuff is free. Oh my gosh. That's great. So where can people find you and where can they uh, check out this ebook or check out the information that you have? Yeah, it's all at rachelvarga.ca. And yeah, so I have a great ebook. I have um, 30 video masterclass series that I filmed on Salt Spring Island. It's just beautiful, beautiful location. Um, I offer one-on-one -on -one, um, proactive aging consultations. You know, it's not about like anti-aging. It's just about how to figure out how to do this whole aging thing effectively and use the, the most of your time and money. And yeah, I love, I love speaking and, and teaching on the topic, but those are the best ways to reach me at rachelvarga.ca podcast, Rachel Varga podcast. I'm on YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, just look up Rachel Varga official. And then for your community, I have a great gift for you all. Oh, tell us, tell us. Thank you. Yeah. So the promo code that we decided on, why don't you share that with everyone? Okay, you guys. So the promo code is simply full. So you won't forget that. And yeah, that's going to give you access to 15% off everything. And I don't actually advertise a lot of what I do is just word of mouth. And for some reason, it just attracts the most wonderful people mm. um, to really when you're ready to kind of figure out 
how to go about this whole aging stuff and you know what to do what not to do what products to use what procedures might be most helpful it's nice to have someone guide you so for all of your audience here in this awesome facebook group they're working with you as a health expert i work with physiotherapists naturopaths um, you know, energy healers, physiatrists, everything. I do absolutely everything possible myself. So I work with experts in different faculties. So in regards to like skin and rejuvenation, that's kind of how I help. Oh, I love what you do. And actually, I think if you still have time, there's two more questions. Yeah, lots of time. That's time. okay. All right, great. Um, and, and thank you so much for the 15% off. I can't wait to look at all the different things that you have and take advantage of it myself. My pleasure. Uh, all right. So two more questions. So Karen says she has thick, frizzy hair. It's brittle. Any hear you. <laughs> hair? No. Okay. So thick, brittle, frizzy hair. I totally feel you. And <laughs> what I figured out is, you know, I got to show up to the salon experts, right? I have some really great hairstylists that are using some really great, clean, professional products on me. So just find a hairstylist near you that, you know, is actually caring about the products that they're using in treatments. You want to be paraben free, phthalate free artificial dyes, fragrances free, sulfate free. You want to avoid all of those. Those are all things that are not good for us, um, but there's some chemicals that actually are good for us, like you've probably heard of water and air. So chemical free, all natural, green, those are just marketing ploys. FYI, I just like to drop that. The, yeah, but using professional salon products I find is really helpful. Trust me, I've tried coconut oil, olive oil. You just gotta use stuff that's formulated to perform well on the hair. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. And then for me, what I have always been curious about are your like top laser skin treatments. And so I just, I keep hearing about it. I don't know very much about it at all, um, but I would love to know more. Can you yeah, there is so many options out there. And I spent about two years actually getting my hands on some of the best products and the best products and procedures out there. And I was so disappointed with either these lasers, they were too uncomfortable for the patient, they weren't detailed enough so we can do the eyelids, the nose, the lips properly, or they just weren't giving the results that we wanted. And so it's all about photography, going to a place where there's a physician, where there's a nurse involved, not just looking on Groupon for the best deal, you pay for what you get. Um, so during a consult, I do recommend things that are specific to your needs. Um, but there's a really cool Stanford study. There's actually two I'm going to talk about. So I can actually give information, by the way, like this when I reference a study. So that's kind of how I can get around that. So one of the studies actually looked at gene expression in the skin. So when people received a treatment called broadband light or IPL, intense pulse light, there's different types of IPLs out there. So this is specific to BBL, broadband light. Um, people were, their gene changes were, were noticeable. So when women in their 50s had this treatment, their, their skin genes were reflective more of that in someone in their 30s. There was like a switching on and off. So yes, there's actually a way that we can impact the, the gene expression of our skin, which is incredible. So it's just, you know, what next is going to happen in the body, basically. So that's really great for obviously just improving the vitality of your skin on a genetic level. And then also uh, with another Stanford study talking about the BBL, when people have that type of treatment, they can perceive, be perceived as looking about 10 years younger. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So okay. very, very cool. So there's many different lasers out there. Um, lasers typically are going to have different targets in the skin. So either melanin, so brown spots, hemoglobin, rosacea, broken capillaries, or water, which is actually in all of our, our skin cells. So it depends on what the target of the laser is to see what the outcome is going to be. But there's many different options, but there's also a lot of options that are not very good. So I, I definitely share that with people. But, but, you know, if you have reds, browns, pore size, there's, there's a ton of great uh, options out there. But people with different skin types are going to have different recommendations. So I can't necessarily just right. say like a blanket recommendation. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Melanie loves the, the radiance, how you talked about radiance before. 
it's so beautiful, right? Like our inner radiance and um, I, okay. And then my final, final question, um, your top at home treatment. Oh, my top at home treatment. There's a couple. Well, obviously getting an HR. I mean, that's totally free. <laughs> right. Um, I do like to do microneedling. So <laughs> Microneedling is collagen induction therapy, and uh, there's tons of research out there since the 90s, and it actually can create a denser form of collagen than some of the lasers. But a word of wording, you need to get them through a qualified distributor, not on Amazon or eBay. And it's probably the top question I also get online. Where do I get a roller? How do I do it? Where do I get people for some reason just like buy a roller and then Think that they can just start doing it and hope for the best. No, you have to be properly guided on how to prep your skin before, how to use your roller, and then what to apply afterwards. So there's a whole kind of method to the madness. It's not just rolling and then applying your your typical products because it's like aerating the lawn, right? Think about the you know you were pushing the aerator on the lawn. It's got that barrel and it's got the the little like needles going into the ground, and then you have these channels in the in the earth. And then you put the fertilizer on, hopefully it's, you know, glycophosphate free, but on the skin, we can put different um, products on to sink in very deep. So if you're just using like a standard product, it's yeah. basically getting injected in the skin. So you want to use stuff that's um, studied to be researched and studied to be researched and be safe and effective. Okay. When you said micro needling, I, I've only ever heard of it used for like running injuries. And so like when people get it to their calves or get it done to their legs, I had never heard of it done for the face. Microneedling, do you mean uh, like acupuncture or? No, well, is, is that what you just called this? Microneedling, is that what you just called it? So yeah, microneedling or dermal rolling, they're kind of one oh. of the same. Yeah. yeah. That, well, that's so, I mean, cause, cause I had, I used to have a, a coworker who ran all the time. She's probably still running. She's probably running right now as we're talking, but yeah. she was always having injuries. Right. And so she would get an injury. And so they would do something called micro needling to her, but I never really knew what it was. Was it micro needling or PRP? Well, she called it micro needling. She said it was kind of painful and they were like, kind of, but like your are oh, yeah. yeah, that's kind of like, I, it might be IMS or acupuncture that she's okay. talking about. So going and breaking up those muscle fibers, I love acupuncture. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. It's so great. This is different though from what different. you're saying. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're creating like a little bit of an injury to support collagen, but you have to know how to use it properly. So don't just buy that $20 roller you find on Amazon or eBay. There are options that um, can last quite a bit longer than that, that are actually not maybe made in places like China where they have uh, heavy metals or they're not manufactured well. Um, so you want to use products that are researched to be safe and effective. Okay. Oh my goodness, Rachel, you are such a wealth of information and Thanks. such a perfect guest for our month of renewal. There are so many things right now that I feel like I want to do and can do. Thank you so much for sharing your time and for being with us today. Yeah, I feel like I have a couple closing thoughts that I'd really like to share. Uh, yes, please. So when you can kind of tune in to how you're feeling, you know, with different people, places, or things, just have a little bit of grace and softness and just notice yourself. Like sometimes people can feel very triggered talking about aging and things like that. Um, so I was recently interviewed by Dave Asprey on Bulletproof Radio. You might've heard of that podcast. It's, it's awesome. And it, it, he said something hilarious. It was like a trigger warning that if you don't look after yourself, you're gonna end up in a diaper and a walker, right? Oh. For the last 20 years of your life. So what you do at a young age to be proactive is really a key. So don't look at it as being, uh, a lot of women need to hear this because they can feel really guilty taking the time and money to look after themselves. It doesn't take a lot of money to get started on a great skincare routine. Trust me, when you start using the right products, you'll probably spend less money and actually see you know, changes in your skin over time that, you, that you're hoping to see. But it's just, it's good to take time to care for yourself so that you are then uh, a bit of, uh, you know, an encouragement to other people around you to say, oh, what are you doing, right? You look great. And then it will have a little bit of a trickle down effect when you start to care for yourself. And then when, 
when we're talking about radiance, when you're healthier, it's almost like there's going to be less, less opportunity in your body for your body to hold on to these toxins, which can dull your hair, skin, nails, just your vibrancy and vitality. So the healthier you are, the more aware of, the more aware you are of different toxins in your home and beauty routine and your environment, there's just going to be less junk kind of clouding your radiance. And also yeah. your thoughts, really, you know, your beautiful self-care thoughts, keeping it positive, giving yourself grace, being kind to yourself, not comparing, but just kind of helping, helping each other out a little bit, encourage each other, you know, spread a little, a little love and light. That's what my most radiant patients are doing. I love that. We call that all that clutter. Like, yeah. don't clutter, like that's, you know, the negative heavy thoughts are clutter. The, the face creams that are full of toxins, that clutter, right? Yeah. So treat yourself so well. And you're right. As women, we do need to hear this because we feel like any kind of self-care is being selfish or we should do, we should take care of everybody else first. And then we have no energy to take care of ourselves. And so I'm so glad that you really made that point just now. Mm -hmm. I learned that from my mom. She was a night nurse for about 30 years, dedicated her life to looking after her patients and her family. And so I learned that at a really young age, how to look after myself, you know, starting in my teens. So I'm pretty lucky I've had a bit of a leg up in that regard and started on this path myself at a young age, but it's never too old or too, too early. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Will you remind us where can we find you again? Just one last time and Sure. My website's rachelvarga.ca and there you can register for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. Uh, you can register for my masterclass ebook. You can find me everywhere. The Rachel Varga podcast. I'm on YouTube. Just search my name. You can research, uh, you can read my, my articles that I've written on any uh, research article PubMed place and then Facebook and Instagram, Rachel Varga official. Super. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure being here and, and helping to support your community. Yeah, so appreciate it. So much fun. All right. Have a great day, you all. And I will be back in the community on Sunday with your next lesson, your next fun work that is all about renewal. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone.